What if you could read a story, not in books, not in stone, but deep within the body itself? A story passed silently through blood, whispered in the double helix of every cell. There is a place where such a story lives, a land that holds within it the memory of empires, migrations, and forgotten peoples. That place is Anatolia. Today we call it Turkey. But the Turkish genome tells a tale far older than the Republic, older even than the Ottomans or the Seljuks. To understand Turkish DNA, you must first step beyond nations, beyond flags, and listen to the land itself. Because this land was never still. Even in the Paleolithic, tens of thousands of years ago, human footsteps echoed across Anatolia's mountains and valleys, carrying with them the early genes of our species. Long before writing, long before metal, these ancient hunter-gatherers were already leaving their imprint in the bloodlines that would one day become Turkish. Then came the great transformation, agriculture. From about 10,000 years ago, the first farmers appeared here. They were not invaders, they were innovators. They took root in the Anatolian soil and changed the world. These Neolithic people did more than plant crops, they planted DNA. As they spread into Europe, they left behind a genetic fingerprint that still survives in southern European populations today. But Anatolia wasn't empty. It absorbed and it remembered. Wave after wave of civilization followed. The Hattians and Hurrians, the mighty Hittites, the Phrygians, the Luwians, the Greeks, the Armenians. Empires rose and fell like tides. Languages changed. Gods came and went. But deep beneath the surface, DNA preserved the memory. And what's extraordinary is that modern genetic studies have confirmed this deep-rooted legacy. Ancient DNA extracted from human remains buried millennia ago, some over 8,000 years old, shows a clear connection to the people living in Anatolia today. This is not mythology. It's not cultural pride. It's data. Even as cultures shifted and empires shattered, the people of Anatolia remained connected to their ancient past through the blood that flowed in their veins. Their genes tell us that the Turkish population didn't begin in the 11th century. It stretches far, far deeper into the bedrock of prehistory. Before a single word of Turkish was ever spoken in Anatolia, its DNA was already centuries in the making. And yet, the story was only beginning. Somewhere beyond the Great Kazakh Plains, east of the Caspian Sea, a people emerged, not from a single tribe or kingdom, but from centuries of movement, mixture, and survival on the harsh steppes of Central Asia. They were not yet called Turks, but they were becoming them. In the high valleys of the Altai Mountains, where Mongolia, Siberia, and Kazakhstan meet, a language took shape. It was the ancestral root of what we now call Turkic. And with that language came a new identity, one forged not in isolation, but through continuous exchange with the peoples around them, Iranian traders, Tokarian monks, Mongolic horsemen, and ancient steppe nomads. This was not a pure beginning. It was a hybrid one. Chinese records spoke of a confederation of warriors called the Xiongnu, fierce and mobile. Some of their descendants became the Gok Turks, the first people to call themselves by the name that would echo through history Turk. And from the moment they stepped into the historical record, they were already genetically diverse, carrying both East Asian and West Eurasian ancestry. Even their faces, as reconstructed from ancient remains, reflect this dual heritage. They were not fully East. They were not fully West. They were both. As centuries passed, these Turkic-speaking peoples began to push westward. The reasons were many. Environmental shifts, internal conflicts, and the political shockwaves of the rising Mongol Empire. Like a tidal wave breaking against the mountains of Iran, wave after wave of Turkic groups poured toward the Middle East. And then came the turning point, the year 1071, the Battle of Manzikert. The Seljuk Turks, recent converts to Islam, clashed with the Byzantine Empire and shattered its control over central Anatolia. But the Seljuks did not arrive as a flood of invaders. There was no mass colonization. Instead, they arrived as a ruling elite, spreading their language, religion, and culture over a native population that was already genetically diverse. The DNA confirms this. The contribution of Central Asian genes to modern Turkish people is real, but modest. In most regions, it ranges from 8 to 10%. It's not erasure. It's layering. 
and the Turkic influence was not uniform. It varied by geography. In some parts of Anatolia, you can still trace elevated signals of Central Asian ancestry, particularly in the interior regions among Turkmen-descended communities. But elsewhere, such as along the Black Sea coast or in parts of Thrace, those signals are faint, almost ghost-like. This isn't a contradiction. It's the essence of Turkish genetic identity, mosaic, not monolith. As the Turkic language spread, it fused with local dialects. As Islamic governance took hold, it coexisted with Christian traditions for centuries. And as the centuries rolled forward, the identity we now call Turkish slowly crystallized, not by replacing the past, but by absorbing it. They say a nation is a product of its history. But what if it's also a mirror of migrations no one remembers? Beneath the skin of modern Turkey lies a genetic pattern as intricate as the carpets once woven in its islands, a pattern not defined by one color, but by a fusion of threads, drawn from every direction of the ancient world. Recent whole genome sequencing has exposed a truth deeper than any myth. Turkish DNA is not homogenous. It is layered, regional, and remarkably complex, and it varies, subtly but meaningfully, from coast to coast. In the West, near Izmir and the Aegean, genetic clustering reveals strong affinity with Southern Europeans. Shared ancestry with Greeks, Italians, and Balkan populations forms a clear genetic corridor across the Aegean Sea. But travel eastward into the rugged spine of Anatolia, and the signal begins to shift. Here, among the heartland cities and high plains, we begin to detect the whispers of Central Asia more clearly. The ancestral imprint of Oga's Turkic tribes becomes faintly visible, not dominant, but present, like a watermark beneath centuries of local heritage. In the Black Sea region, another transformation takes place. The people of Trabzon and surrounding provinces carry genetic ties to the Caucasus, hinting at ancient interactions with Kartvelian and Circassian groups. Their DNA bears witness to quiet exchanges, marriages, migrations, and settlements carried out across the mountain passes. Further south, closer to the Levant and Mesopotamia, the gene flow bends again. Ancestry linked to Middle Eastern populations grows stronger, a reflection of millennia of cultural overlap with Syriac, Armenian, and Kurdish communities. What emerges is not a uniform identity, but a genetic spectrum, a geographical gradient of ancestry, shaped by time, trade, war, and intermarriage. Scientific models confirm this. On a principal component analysis, where the human genome is mapped in two dimensions, Turkish individuals do not cluster in a tight group. Instead, they appear stretched across a vast space, overlapping with Southern Europe, the Caucasus, Iran, and, in certain instances, even parts of Central and South Asia. This spread is not an error. It is the legacy of a land that has always been open, always permeable. And while some may ask, who are the real Turks? The genome replies with another question. Can people be real because they are diverse? The answer may lie not in who the Turkish people replaced, but in whom they absorbed. Their genetic code is a memory palace, housing thousands of untold stories, encrypted not in books, but in the biological script of life itself. Every genome tells a story, but some stories are louder than others. Some are whispered through rare mutations, others through silence. Inside Turkish DNA, researchers have uncovered something extraordinary, a landscape filled with variations so rare, so specific, that they exist nowhere else on Earth. In a study spanning thousands of individuals, scientists discovered that nearly half of the rarest genetic variants in Turkey are entirely unique to its population, not found in Europe, not found in the Middle East, not even in vast international gene banks. They are Turkish, and they are hidden time capsules. This level of uniqueness doesn't come from isolation. It comes from complexity, from centuries of overlapping civilizations, combined with a powerful and often overlooked factor, endogamy. In many regions of Turkey, especially the East, families have historically married within close kinship circles. And while this practice carries certain medical risks, it also offers an unparalleled gift to science. Because when genes repeat across generations, something strange happens. Rare mutations become visible, clear, traceable. Researchers have used these patterns to identify hundreds of loss-of-function mutations, natural gene knockouts, 
that reveal how certain genes behave when they simply stop working. In any other population, such discoveries would require tens of thousands of subjects. But in Turkey, a single family tree can unlock an entire gene. This isn't just about ancestry. It's about future medicine. Some of these variants have direct links to neurological disorders, metabolic diseases, or immune conditions. Others may hold keys to resilience, genetic quirks that protect, rather than harm. Either way, they offer something the world desperately needs, precision. And it doesn't end there. Turkish DNA also bears the marks of ancient human bottlenecks, moments in time when global populations collapsed, migrated, and reformed. One of these bottlenecks, estimated around 50,000 years ago, left an imprint still detectable in modern Anatolian genomes. Another signature comes from the long-forgotten flow of early farmers, mixing with hunter-gatherers and Caucasian tribes, creating a population that was never static, always shifting. Even the structure of the genome itself, the way certain alleles are inherited together, tells a tale of long roads and shared fates. In some Turkish individuals, stretches of uninterrupted DNA span dozens of millions of base pairs. These long runs of homozygosity are the quiet footprints of deep, interwoven lineage. They are not errors. They are echoes. And in those echoes, we find a deeper truth. The Turkish genome isn't just diverse. It is transparent, offering scientists a rare window into both the past and the biological future of humanity. Across the centuries, one question has lingered beneath the surface of Turkish identity. Who were the original Turks? Not in myth, not in ideology, but in biology. The historical record tells us of the Seljuks, of empires built on horseback, of the slow spread of a new language across a deeply ancient land. But DNA tells a subtler, stranger tale. Because modern Turks are not a direct mirror of those who rode in from Central Asia. Instead, they are the result of something far more intricate, a cultural transmission layered over a deeply rooted local population. Genetic evidence shows that when Turkic-speaking groups entered Anatolia, they did not erase what came before. They added to it. Instead of displacing entire populations, they introduced a linguistic and cultural framework that gradually absorbed those around them. Local Christians, Hellenized Anatolians, Armenians, and others, over time, many adopted the Turkish language, converted to Islam, and became part of a new socio-political identity. But their genetic legacy remained anchored in the land. And this is where the science becomes clear. Genome-wide comparisons between medieval Turkic samples and present-day Turkish populations reveal divergence. The steppe ancestry, though present, accounts for a small but meaningful fraction. So where did that ancestry go? It persists. Not as a dominant force, but as a quiet undercurrent, stronger in some regions, fainter in others. Modern Turkmen populations, for example, show the closest resemblance to the medieval Ogas Turks who first entered Anatolia. Their DNA retains higher Central Asian signals, hinting at a slower rate of assimilation and intermarriage. But in urban centers, and especially in the West, the Turkic imprint blends almost invisibly into a sea of older genetic contributions. This dissonance between language and lineage is not unique to Turkey. It has happened before, in Hungary, in Azerbaijan, in northern India. A new language takes root, not through mass migration, but through dominance of administration, military, and faith. Over time, people begin to speak differently without changing who they are genetically. And yet, despite this mosaic, the cultural identity that formed was real. It was cohesive. The Ottoman Empire rose not because of racial uniformity, but because of ideological unity. The modern Turkish nation, too, is not the product of genetic singularity. It is the product of convergence, where steppe, Mediterranean, Caucasian, and Levantine threads were woven into a common civic fabric. So when we ask, who are the real Turks? The answer is not found in blood purity. It's found in how identity evolves. It's found in how language, culture, and shared destiny reshape entire populations, leaving the genome as a silent witness, carrying both the memory of ancient Anatolia and the fire of the distant steppes. Some stories are not written in ink. They are etched in silence, carried not in libraries or monuments, but in the invisible language of life itself. 
Turkish DNA is not a tale of conquest alone. It is a map of survival, of union, of becoming. From the windswept steppes of Central Asia to the sunlit shores of the Aegean, the journey is not linear. It bends, it branches, it collides. And in that collision, something rare was born, a human archive that does not belong to one tribe, or one empire, or one race. It belongs to all who cross this land. It belongs to the farmer who tilled Anatolian soil 9,000 years ago, to the merchant who spoke Persian in the Seljuk court, to the soldier from the Caucasus who stood beneath the Ottoman crescent, to the mother who carried ancient mitochondrial lineages without ever knowing their name. This is not a story of fragments. It is a story of fusions. And perhaps, in an age obsessed with dividing lines, there is something quietly revolutionary about that. Because Turkish identity, at its core, was never about isolation. It was always about connection. Connection between East and West. Between past and present. Between science and soul. Your DNA, too, is part of this great equation. It may hold pieces of forgotten migrations, of distant empires, of strangers who once became family. So ask yourself, what secrets does your blood remember? What ancient footsteps live on in the code you carry? We are not just descendants. We are storytellers made of cells. And the Turkish genome, in all its complexity, contradiction, and beauty, reminds us that humanity has always been mixed, always moving, always becoming something new. If this story moved you, share it. Add your voice to the conversation. And maybe, just maybe, begin a journey into your own genetic past. Because the greatest archaeology isn't buried in the ground. It's waiting inside you.